Well, good afternoon, everyone. Unless you are west of uh, Indiana, then good morning to you. And we're so glad that you could join us here today on the campus of Anderson University. As you can hopefully see in our newly developed Center for Security Studies and Cyber Defense, we're so glad you could join us so we could share with you some information about our Call to Soar Focus Fundraising Initiative and what you have done to help us get to where we are and where we still need to get to before the end of this calendar year. So just a couple more months, really. And so we've got a number of people here with us today that you will hear from and just wanted to tell you about uh, some of those as we focus on two of our growth areas in our academic areas. One is in business. Many of you are Fall School of Business grads, alum, whatever you may be, and you're out in the world and you're making a difference in the world for Christ and the kingdom. And also, maybe making some decent bucks doing that. And so that's part of what we want to talk about is how can you reinvest in the life of the university so you can help the next generation of students also make a difference in the world as you have been. We're also going to be talking about cybersecurity, national security, and that's the reason that we're in this new space. It's, it's pretty cool as we look at how we can do things that make a difference in a rapidly developing and changing world, particularly not cybersecurity, and also national security. So we're gonna hear a, a, about both of those areas. Before we get to those though, I wanted to just share with you a little bit about our, our Call to Soar Award. We're actually in the third year of our, our Focus Fundraising Initiative. The first year and a half was part of what we call the silent phase as we sought to raise $20 million, and you'll hear more about that. But we've actually had uh, just announced our third winner of our Call to Soar Award. And it was an honor for me earlier this week as our part of our board of trustees meeting to present that award to Dr. Lloyd Schnuck. And you'll hear more about him uh, in just a moment. Lloyd Schnuck is a humble Christ-centered doctor in South Carolina who's just made a world of difference in so many ways. And so I'd like to share a little bit about him as I presented the award to him this past Tuesday as part of our board meeting. And just on the background, the Call to Soar Award is goes to individuals who identify AU as an important influence in their lives and who have helped other Ravens find out how they are, quote, called to soar through generosity and other support of AU and our students. And so this award, the third and final, goes to Dr. Lloyd Schnuck, who was a 1964 graduate of then Anderson College, and then a 1968 graduate of medical school in Georgia, before he became a board certified diagnostic radiologist, and he's practiced over 50 years in that discipline in Georgia. Now, following graduation from med school, he actually served uh, in the military as uh, an army, in the army as a captain battalion surgeon in the 5th Special Forces Group in Vietnam. He's a recipient of a number of medals and awards for his service. And then beginning in 1996, he served for 11 years as a medical as at the Medical College of, of Georgia as a professor of radiology and was a recipient there of the Distinguished Faculty Award. He has served his profession with distinction and honor and equally so his alma mater. He has been a board certified, he's been a board of trustee member here at AU since 2009 and his service has included participation in a number of board committees. He's also been very generous in making gifts over the last 39 years those gifts now total over $1 million. So we're most appreciative of his support for this Call to Soar Focus Fundraising Initiative, for which just during these last three years, he's given over a third of that million dollars. And he's also, part of that is to create a new electrical engineering lab, which you might hear about more sometime in, in a different day. Uh, and so if you know Lloyd, as I mentioned, he is a humble, gentle, kind man who is Christ-centered, and he, it, it is so professionally accomplished and generous. So in honor uh, of Lloyd's dedication and service to Anderson University, we are pleased to be able to present our third uh, Call to Soar Award. So moving on, we are in what we would call the final push uh, for Call to, call to Soar, and we still need your help uh, for us to get to reach our financial goals, but more importantly, to reach the goal of bringing more students to AU who will persist and go out and make a difference in their world. And so you're going to hear from some of these folks uh, in just a moment. I will start off uh, with introducing to you Dr. Michael Frank, um, and uh, who in just a moment, but first we're going to have a video from one of the national security students, Rachel Milford. So 
please uh, listen as, as Rachel talks about national security. I actually chose AU my junior year of high school and I took classes up here through the launch program my senior year of high school both semesters, which was an amazing opportunity. From a soccer standpoint, um, I wanted to play here and I've had the opportunity of being on the team, which is absolutely incredible. I got recruited by the coach junior year and then finalized that senior year. And then also the major. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting with a couple professors and at the time cybersecurity was a really new major here and just had the pleasure of hearing about what it was and I felt like I was being described when they described the major. And then I also talked to President Pistol and obviously all of his background. And I was like, this is the place for me. Professors truly care, truly know you, which I guess is true across the campus, but like it's such a specialized growing field that it's so exciting and there's so much going on in the world that it's like, for example, the other day there was um, a massive hack that happened and we took time, you know, we took the first 20 minutes of our class and talked about it as opposed to going on with class material. And that's really how you learn. As far as the hands-on experience, I think we've done a really good job of providing that. We have week-long simulations where we are posing as someone in the government. We're given a role and we have to play that person for a week long. And it's crazy because the preparation that goes into that is amazing. And that's the beauty of the situation room that we have is no other university has a situation room that looks like the one in BC. You just don't, um, which is so cool. It makes you think differently than just sitting in a classroom. Well, thank you, Rachel, for that. Um, and I'm joined now by Dr. Michael Frank, who has been a professor here, what, for 20 years yes. now? Young guy like you, 20 years already. Uh, and Dr. Frank is a professor of political science and national security studies. And so, Michael, I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions about the national security, maybe cybersecurity. So different disciplines, obviously, but what, what do you see as the similarities and the differences between the two? Yeah, the two programs fall under the umbrella of the security studies program. Um, and the security studies has roots in both the uh, School of Science and Engineering and the School of Humanities and Behavioral Sciences. So <clears throat> the differences between the two majors really come from those different roots. Uh, the mission of the program, so for both majors, is to develop a pipeline of graduates with excellent technical skills, mm -hmm. strong Christian ethics, and a desire to serve on the front lines, you know, protecting our nation, our communities, and our industries from threats, both foreign and domestic, mm -hmm. whether that's in the physical or the cyber realm. Um, so the differences, like I said, come from the two schools, but I see more similarities than differences. And the first one is that uh, both majors have an emphasis on professional ethics from a Christian faith perspective. Mm -hmm. That's a distinctive feature of our program and one that separates us from our competitors. And it's absolutely essential. Um, as you know, our graduates are, are on the front lines protecting the homeland, yeah. right? And uh, uh, people in those positions have tools and skills um, for example, cybersecurity skills, the ability to hack secure networks, to identify and thwart plots, say, from violent domestic extremists on the one hand, to adversaries like North Korea. Mm. Or they have a gun and a badge, you know, to investigate crimes and to mm -hmm. prevent crimes. So they have some significant tools in, and skills that uh, help protect us. I know of what you speak. <laughs> <laughs> but you also know that if those tools are misused, oh, yeah. the rights and liberties of American citizens right. can be uh, profoundly and negative, negatively affected. Yeah. So uh, it's, uh, and we see stories about that in the news all the time, mm -hmm. but uh, it's essential, absolutely essential for people in those positions to be possess both integrity right and a strong ethical foundation. And that's precisely what makes our approach so important. It, it makes me think, Michael, that we've had several national security distinguished speakers come to campus and they have mentioned that precisely, that the importance of what you mentioned about the integrity portion, because 
they can teach, uh, they can refine the, the, the white hat hacking right. skills, if you will, the good hacking, looking at vulnerabilities and things, the, the cybersecurity assessments, but it's tough to teach integrity. And so that's why they so value uh, Anderson University cybersecurity grads. Now we're in this space, um, which there's nobody in here working right now, but this is our Center for Security Studies and Cyber Defense which I think, as most of our folks know, that was funded by a million dollar grant from the Lilly Foundation and a quarter million dollar grant from the Avis Foundation, which was funded by uh, the generosity of Leland Bourne uh, before his passing a couple of years ago now. Uh, I wondered if you could tell us just a little bit about how this center can benefit AU students, mm -hmm. undergrad students, perhaps some of our alum mm -hmm. and perhaps the local community. Yeah, the center, um has a twofold mission. One is to support uh, the security studies program, mm -hmm. the, uh, support the mission of the security studies program. But the second thing is to uh, serve the uh, surrounding community. Yeah. So I want to focus on the second part of that yeah. first. Um, uh, the center supports the surrounding community, will support the surrounding community by providing a number of below market cost services uh, security services to local and regional uh, constituents. And those services can range from, um, say, network monitoring through our security operations center, which we're sitting in the center of right mm, now, right. Um, uh, but also cybersecurity maturity audits uh, mm -hmm. or digital or physical penetration testing. That's one set of services. Right. A second one would be tabletop exercises mm. uh, for testing organizational responses to right. security threats, say ransomware on the one hand or uh, catastrophic events on the other. Um, I have to, uh, I imagine that had we been able to stand up the center a few years ago, mm. that uh, we would have been able to provide some needed uh, assistance to our local constituents in dealing with the outbreak of the pandemic. Well, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'd say a third service that we can mm -hmm. provide is training and certification for the local workforce through workshops or mm -hmm. non-degree courses. And uh, we also plan to uh, um, uh, provide uh, conferences and publications so mm -hmm. our constituents uh, are informed about the mm -hmm. uh, current uh, threat environment and tools and practices designed to uh, prevent that. So that's, I'd say, what the center is looking to right. do for our local constituents. Mm -hmm. That benefits our students because our students are going to be interns in the center. And uh, they're the primary labor that will be providing those services. So, uh, um, for example, we're in the process right now of hiring six security operations center interns mm, okay. um, who will be um, providing network uh, monitoring through the SOC uh, okay. for any uh, uh, potential the penetration. SOC being the, the security, security operations center. Right. Um, so uh, that gives those students training yeah. um, in uh, tools and techniques that they may only briefly encounter in a classroom. Right. Uh, and that helps to develop their professional competencies. Well, I was going to ask you about that uh, because, so what difference does this make? We talk on campus yeah. about wanting to be distinctive, right. compelling, and relevant. Right. So it sounds like you're describing some real world experience yeah. that may help them in either finding about possible jobs or actually getting jobs. Could you talk a little yeah, bit about I th that? I think it's going to augment mm -hmm. um, the skill set that they would develop in their coursework. I, I see this as, in, as a bonus, right, for our mm -hmm. students um, that they wouldn't be able to get in another program. But uh, I'd say also for the interns, they're going to be able to leave AU with two years of relevant experience right. on their resumes, which is going to set them apart from their competitors for this burgeoning job market. And I'd say a third thing, because these are paid internships and well-paid internships, mm. that they're going to leave AU with less debt than they otherwise would mm. have. So yeah. the center benefits students financially, technically, and professionally. That's great. I've talked about it with a number of folks in the Anderson community in Indianapolis. And they are excited to find out more. Uh, uh, Michael and I actually were part of a grant, another grant um, proposal last month or mm -hmm. just six weeks ago or so in Indianapolis that would help uh, our students 
but it would help the Madison County Prosecutor's Office. We'll see if that comes through. We'll know in December on that to give some very practical experience in terms of actual criminal investigations where they are doing digital forensic analysis of, for example, smartphones and laptops and things like that. So, yeah. Well, thank you, Mark. Anything else you'd uh, care to comment on? Um, I yeah, can just talk, a brief time. Um, I can talk about uh, the potential for growth, job growth. I sure. mean, the job growth is phenomenal. Oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah. The, Tell us about that. Because uh, uh, our security concerns, both cyber and national security, are only growing. I yeah, mean, every the day. threat environment. Ransomware. Every day you see yeah. something about ransomware. Ransomware. I mean, we're becoming a more digital society and economy. Every day. Um, but we also see an increase in threats from our, uh, uh, for our from our adversaries, uh, mm-hmm. Russia, China, um, North Korea, and Iran in particular. And those are the real concerns that we right. have, as opposed to the you know the um, you know the random hacker that right. you see right. uh, you know on TV. And uh, those adversaries are actively stealing intellectual property from mm-hmm. our industries. Um, they are uh, actively penetrating our utilities, gas, water, and electric. Colonial pipeline. Colonial pipeline. You're probably going to mention that. <laughs> and they're act. I mean, they're actively using social media to yes. sow false narratives and to create dissension yeah. in the American public. Right. And so this is only going to get worse, not better. So the, the need for jobs is going to grow, but we already see that particularly in the cyber realm. Right. Um, there, according to one study, there are about a million cybersecurity professionals currently working in the United States, mm. and there are about a half million unfilled positions. Oh, my goodness. The Bureau of Labor Statistics sees a 31% growth rate in the next few years wow. in cybersecurity positions. Wow. So the need for cybersecurity professionals right now is, is tremendous and it's only going to get uh, larger. And I'd say the same thing on the national security right. side um, for a variety of reasons, mm. again, increased threat, but also um, kind of a quirk in that in the past four years, there's been a hollowing out of, say, mm. the uh, mid-level government uh, servant or government servants. And so consequently, there is a huge population of uh, people in the intelligence and federal law enforcement that are 60 above or 30 or below. Yes. So consequently, in the next few years, the demand for our national security students is going to be increasing as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's uh, it sounds like what you're saying to um, our, our participants here today that that if they know of somebody who might be interested in studying cybersecurity or national security, that AU is a great place because not only do they learn the skills, but they get the relevant experience. They do it in an atmosphere of integrity mm-hmm. and hopeful, mm-hmm. hopefully uh, as humble Christ followers who can serve others as one of our core values, obviously serving leadership and integrity and excellence and generosity and responsibility, those things that they can get that, all those things here at Anderson University. So I'm sure if any of our uh, folks who are watching today have Follow up questions that, that Dr. Frank yes. could answer or I could answer, we'd be glad to do that. So, thank you, Dr. Frank. Appreciate you being with us now. Yeah. So, we will actually. Um, so, there's a question How is the center connected to the computer science department? Yeah. Perhaps you just take that one. Yeah, I'd say Good that. Question. Yeah, the, uh, um, there are faculty in both computer science and in political science that are affiliated with the center. And uh, the computer science faculty in particular will be helping uh, to train uh, students for the uh, jobs that they're undertaking in the center as interns, but uh, also uh, providing, uh, you know, helping to provide some of the services, say certification training programs or developing tabletop exercises. Right. Yeah. and, And part of that relevancy question but not directly asked or we didn't address, but we are seeking and, and applying for and have high confidence that we will receive a designation for excellence in, in cybersecurity through the National Security Agency, NSA, that, that big spy agency outside of uh, Baltimore, Fort Meade, Maryland, and also the Department of Homeland Security, which I know a little bit about. And as we have to have our first graduates in cybersecurity, which will be this, right. this coming May, and so with those graduates, we are then able to finalize our application to receive that designation 
which will also make us distinctive, compelling, and relevant. I think we'll be the first, maybe the second uh, Christ-centered school in the country right. to receive that designation right, right here in Anderson, Indiana. Yeah. Go figure. Yeah. It's up. I'd say one more question. Um, we, Can you read the question? Yes, we train. Uh, we will be training both in cyber in the cybersecurity curriculum, um, but also in the center, they'll learn a number of uh, the uh, 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 talking about the technical skills. Yeah, the, no, I'm talking about. Uh, I can't think of the right word. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, but well, we'll uh, the, the question is about FedRAMP. They learn a oh, number right. of these oh, uh, frameworks. Yeah. That's the word I'm looking frameworks, for. Right. Frameworks. They learn a number of frameworks um, um, that they'll be applying in different situations. So um, FedRAMP is a very technical um, and well developed right. thing. Yes. Um, and uh, I believe you know our students will be gaining some e exposure to that, depending mm -hmm. on the clients that they work with. Uh, but we also recently had a conversation with someone who uh, wants to partner with AU that is affiliated with State Ramp, which is a slightly scaled down version but of FedRAMP. Huge yeah. growth opportunity, both in terms of business opportunities and for jobs for AU students, right. and both as undergrads, as interns, and then for upon graduation. And that's not far down the road, right here uh, in Fishers, Indiana. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. I see one other question. Um, it's what's the position of AU and this program related to the 20 year old Patriot Act? So the university and the center, of course, haven't taken a position, say that we are whatever it is as it relates to the Patriot Act, just as most uh, federal statutes, other than to say that, of course, we abide by the law and make sure that we are focusing on not only the national security, cybersecurity aspects, but also while protecting the civil liberties mm -hmm. and privacy of all U.S. citizens. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we are very intentional about right. also. So that wraps it up for our National Security and Cybersecurity Program. Dr. Frank, thank you for joining us. We're now going to segue over to business and what's going on in the Fall School of Business. We're going to start off uh, with a video featuring FSB student Mariah Murray, and then we're going to hear from one of our professors, Victoria Shaw. So let's go ahead and, and see this, uh, this video, please. really great. Um, I really love all of my professors. I love all of my teachers. I love the intimate classroom setting. If you have like a question or if you need help with anything, like there's only like 10 to 20 people in the classes. So it's usually easy to like meet with the professors. You know everyone in your class, you know everyone in your major. Um, it just feels really personal and it feels like you actually make the connections with your professors to use them later on when you're trying to network and actually go into your career. So like that made a huge impact on me as well. I've been embraced by not only the athletics department, um, academics, I walk around campus and people are like, oh, good job at your meet last week. And I'm like, I don't know what your name is, but thank you so much. <laughs> I had the CLD scholarship, um, which was part tuition. And then I had the reader scholarship, which was some of the other books and stuff. That helped me a lot. I really saw a lot of my friends who would come for a semester and then have to leave because they couldn't cover it or who were worried about taking out too many loans. They couldn't take out an amount of loans. And for me personally, I think out of my friend group, I'm the only one who graduated debt free, which has been like the most amazing thing ever. I didn't realize how big of a deal it was when I was an undergrad, but now seeing how big of an impact that makes when you have to start paying off your student loans. Um, it was a huge like weight off my shoulders. I think coming into AU, I was definitely a more shy person. Um, I really kept to myself a lot. Um, and I think being at Anderson and making like the very personal connections, I've been able to put a plan into place to, to get where I want to go in the future. And I think I've come out of my shell a lot more. I think I'm definitely more confident in what I want to do and how I plan to get there in my life. And yeah, being like unapologetically myself, if that makes sense. Hello, my name is Victoria Shaw and I'm Assistant Professor of Marketing over at the Fall School of Business. And I'm here with Katie Shadowin, and she is one of our students in marketing. I wanna to talk to you very briefly about what is it happening right now in the Fall School of Business 
But to give you a little bit of my story, I was an AU undergrad, graduated in 2017 before going overseas. I got my grad school in Trento, Italy in international management, got a master of science there. Um, before working in London then at a marketing agency and then coming back to my alma mater. And I think one of the reasons why I wanted to come back was because I was poured into as a student. I never even thought about moving overseas until I went on a trias trip in London and I got hooked on traveling and I thought, wow, I'd love to do this more. And I had professors pour into me um, throughout my entire time. And so I thought, you know, let me give this a try and was able to go overseas and even lived over there for a little while during the, the pandemic, which was an interesting experience. So I've been here now at AU for the start of my second year. And so I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about some of the exciting updates that we've got going on. So we have two labs in the Fall School of Business and I wanna to talk to you briefly about both of them. The first one is the Duncan Digital Media Center. That is brand new in the Fall School of Business. That is going to be our hub for all things social media and digital marketing. This is a trending career field. We see jobs in this area growing 10 to 15% a year. This growth was in the upper to 20% due to the pandemic when everyone had to go online and basically turn into an e-commerce business. So this is something that we wanted to invest in. And thank you to one of our donors who kind of give us, gave us that initial uh, seed funding for this lab. This lab's going to be an exciting center for our programming. We'd love to run internships through there, having our students um, who are upper division students like Katie working on different projects for businesses such as social media management, SEO audits, um, digital marketing and uh, pay for click advertising. So this is something that we started to develop. We have a partnership right now with Bankable over at the flagship center in one of the upper division senior capstone courses. We have students who are actually put in charge um, and placed with a small business. And these groups of students work together and create marketing plans for these different businesses. Uh, and then businesses, we've had several offer students um, different internships or a position. Um, these are typically small to medium sized businesses. So they often don't wanna hire someone who's a mid-level or a senior executive executive. They're looking to hire someone with that entry level, that real world experience. And so this is going to be a hub for that. So that is the Duncan Digital Media Lab. That is an exciting new program on campus. We'd love to hear from alumni who would want to partner in that area. But we also have the Star Trading Room, which is our finance hub. And that has been a partnership with Star Bank that was renewed recently for $100,000 over three years. This is an exciting place where we have had the um, student uh, investments group work with our Raven Endowment Fund. And so they grew that initially from $10,000 to now $2.5 million for the university. That has been an exciting center for students to learn about investment, which as we have seen with apps like Robinhood and the advent of what is known as FinTech, we've seen growth in this area as well. So these are two of our primary majors that we have in the FSB that we see incredible growth for. And so in addition to this, we have our sport marketing program. I would say finance marketing and sports marketing are three of the strongest majors that we currently see in the fall school of business. And so um, we have strong internship placements in these programs and job placement. Um, in 2020, we actually had 100% job placement in the fall school of business. So it was an exciting time to get involved with AU. The last thing I want to talk about, as you know, we not only serve uh, the business community for undergraduate training, but with our graduate programs as well. And one of these exciting new graduate programs is the Accelerated MBA. And the Accelerated MBA is the chance to earn your MBA in one year. This is the new launch. Um, we currently have our professional programs that meet in person in Anderson and Fishers. But for those who may be looking for a career shift, this is where we've really decided to hit a market need. And so we're very excited as well. So if you or someone you know is looking to become a Raven, but maybe they've already gotten that undergraduate or that basic job experience, this is a great chance to as well, or to earn a doctor at Anderson University in business as well and earn their DBA. So we're excited to see more Ravens come in the door through any of these programs and get that real world hands-on experience. And so I wanna talk now with someone who has been able to have some of that experience in the Fall School of Business. And so this is Katie. Katie is a senior marketing major, originally from Anderson, Indiana. So she decided to come and to stay home and become a Raven. And so I just wanna talk with you a little bit, Katie, about why did you choose to attend AU and why marketing of all the programs? 
Yeah, so I chose AU mainly for their small class sizes and their competitive business program, along with their willingness through the professors uh, to go just above and beyond to help the students, even outside of the FSB doors, to get us internships, opportunities, uh, work with companies, different businesses, non for profits um, to help their students get that real life experience. Absolutely. And I know that's something that as you've been in classes branding with Dr. Sylvester, you've gotten to work with some of those businesses. And, and that's something that you, I know, wanted to do, I think, in your professional life. So why do you love studying at the Fall School of Business? Um, I just love the Fall School Business classes, that the fact that they take it beyond just the normal textbook style that they par partner with alumni, what they're doing, the businesses that they're involved in, and they're coming to us and letting us help them, whether it be helping them brand their social media, helping them with their website, their content creation. That's some of the stuff that like I absolutely love that the FSB provides because um, it gets us that hands-on experience along with kind of getting us connections and helping us get networking started while we're in school. That's awesome. So you're getting ready to graduate this spring uh, once you, you get through the final classes here in the marketing degree. So, so exciting. So how, what are you interested in doing upon graduation and how are you preparing yourself to go out into the world? So I hope to be able to do something in digital marketing, whether that be social media management, content creation, um, or any type of like writing in general for um, a company that's type type of my niche that I want to hit. And um, I feel like I've been able to kind of get hands-on experience through an internship that I was able to do through the FSB. Um, but I'm doing an internship currently for a company in Nashville where I'm able to manage their social media, write on their blog posts, um, help with their outreach. And I feel like the FSB is really good at getting us um, internships and working with us to help us be able to be prepared for that, whether it's through social media classes with Professor Newton um, or integrated branding and promotions with Dr. Sylvester, um, being able to work with the alumni in the classroom setting to then once we get an internship to be able to use that experience that we learn from our classes in the um, internship has been really helpful for me. Wonderful. Well, I know any business would be really lucky to have you, Katie. Katie has been an exceptional student this year. We've got, I believe, 15 seniors in marketing right now, just in this particular cohort, and they've been working exceptionally on campus, in classroom, and in internship. This is a very hardworking cohort of students, so it's exciting to, to share some of this growth with you and to, to pour into students like Katie, because it's very, very important. Digital marketing is always changing, and so as you know, like I don't use a book because it's constantly changing. You have to throw it away and go, all right, that was outdated last week. So, you know, you always have to be up to date in industry. So it's exciting that you've been able to do that with your internships and in the classroom. So thank you to Katie. Thank you to the Fall School of Business alumni as well. Those of you who came today, it has been a pleasure to share some of the exciting updates happening in our department. I'm now going to turn it over to Jen Hunt, who's a 1991 alumna and our Vice President of Advancement. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining us and thanks to you and to the many others who have supported us through Call to Soar. I'm going to uh, show some slides of some of the exciting things that you have helped us accomplish. Uh, if we can go to the first slide, I'm going to tell you about our initiatives and the four main areas that we are raising funds for. Call to Soar, just as a reminder, is our three-year focused fundraising initiative, uh, where the main purpose is to enhance the student experience. So we've done that by raising funds for academic excellence. So in the five growth areas that we have identified, uh, nursing, business, cyber, and national security, engineering, and education, uh, we have raised funds for things to enhance those already uh, outstanding academic areas. Campus renewal, we have raised funds to enhance spaces that are currently on campus uh, to, in some cases, refresh, some cases, repurpose 
uh, so that spaces are more comfortable, inviting, and uh, useful for the changing needs of our students. We're growing servant leaders through scholarship opportunities. And finally, we have continued to grow resources for athletics, uh, operational support, and other areas. And the next slide shows what our goal has been. Uh, we want to raise $20 million over this three-year period, uh, which, as President mentioned, ends here in a couple of months at the end of December. This graph shows how much we were, uh, how much we are trying to raise for the different areas. So, seven million for scholarships or growing servant leaders, four million for academic programs, two million for campus renewal, and seven million for operational and other support. So this is where we are. We are at 87% of our goal, having raised $17.4 million. That's great, but we still have a little ways to go. So, but what are some of the things that you have helped us accomplish? This campus renewal map shows the updates that have happened all across campus uh, through the helps, help of donors, grants, and other partnerships. And we'd be happy to email this map to you after the program so you can take a look at it get a little closer. But just some of the items on this list include a faculty built green screen in the broadcast center, an electrical engineering lab, which has been mentioned. Uh, we've raised funds towards a new nursing simulation lab. Uh, floors in the OC Lewis gym have been resurfaced. There's a new Brightweiser music lab and much more, literally all across campus. Now I'll quickly show you some pictures of some of the things that have been updated. So the commonplace, thanks to the vision and support of Gloria Gaither, the School of Theology and Christian Ministry Lounge has been transformed into a beautiful space to gather, study, pray, and reflect. We're here in the Center for Cyber Studies and Cyber Defense, and you've already heard about the wonderful hands-on experiences that that is going to provide our students. Uh, you've also heard a little bit about the Duncan Social Media Lab, and uh, it's been made possible by Craig, Marsha, and Melanie Duncan, not Duncan Donuts. Um, we're, you can see that it's, on its way. This is a project in, uh, in progress, but we will be having a ribbon cutting and let you know about that when that is up and running. Uh, eSports. We have an eSports suite on the second floor of Decker. This was just added last year and has already grown to over 40 students. We're actually to a point where we need to look for additional space so we can grow the program. In an effort to attract more honor students, we have uh, created an honors student lounge in each of uh, Martin and Smith Halls, as well as an, a scholar's nest at the top of the library. And among the updates in the library, there's also an indoor hammock lounge. So you can see the before and after on the left and right. Uh, and it comes complete with a mural of the great outdoors, so you can still feel like you're hanging out in the valley even on a rainy day. Uh, the marketplace has had a major makeover, thanks to our friends at Chartwells. Uh, and they incorporated student feedback and what we need, and wow, this place looks really sharp now. Uh, and finally, I'll show uh, Mocha Joe's, again, a really great before and after shot uh, it's like night and day, right? And it was so great for the students to come back, especially after a year of COVID, um, to see some exciting things that have been done for them. Um, and so we are so thankful. None of these things would have happened without your support. You may have heard that recently we've received a gift from the Rickers in the amount of $1 million. So Jay and Nancy Ricker, who were the owners of Ricker Convenience Stores, uh, which if you're in, from Madison County or anywhere in this area, I'm sure you are familiar with. 
Ricker Pops. Ricker Pops are very popular. I've heard People of them. I've them. Not me, but I've heard of them. So. Well, their, their money is uh, designated to help renovate Dunn Hall uh, and then to do some other minor improvements in the other residence halls. The so, lounge areas particularly. Yeah. So if you lived in Dunn Hall, I'm sorry it didn't happen while you were here, but I think you understand why it needs to happen. Yeah, she's talking about me because I was a Dunn Hall <laughs> denizen when I was a student here for at least a couple of years. So I hope you can get the sense for the excitement that uh, this has generated on campus among our students, our faculty and staff, our alumni over homecoming were here mm -hmm. and they got to see a lot of these things. And as I stated previously, we are getting close to our goal, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, and frequently, you and I both get asked, how can we be of most help to right, aid you? Right. So I, I'm going to answer with, with a where, how, and why. Great. Okay. So where you can give, of course, any and all gifts are appreciated. Uh, but one area that would have the greatest impact might be scholarships. Mm -hmm. Um, often scholarship assistance is the thing that makes a difference as to whether a student can come or stay. Right. Um, and they are just vital to our students and to our school's success. So, I mean, many of you have created endowed scholarships, which mm -hmm. provide wonderful ongoing support, um, which are just very useful to our students. We also need scholarship funds that can be used immediately as right. they come in. And so for those kinds of scholarships, we still have a goal of about $1 million that we right. want to come in for that. So when people ask, how can we help? I would ask that people consider AU scholarships. So that could either be the AU Student Fund or any of our specific scholarships. We have one for uh, Hispanic and Latino students, Church of God students, Madison County, uh, legacy, honor students, uh, women in cybersecurity and computer science, mm -hmm. education, um, and more. There's endless opportunities. Mm -hmm. So the next question is how? An easy way is just to go online, anderson.edu, and find the give uh, button. And that will have a drop down that will list uh, the scholarship opportunities. And you can also fill in other with what you like or unrestricted so we can put it uh, to where we have the biggest need. Of course, uh, folks still send in checks. Uh, something that you might think about this year in particular because of how the market was, a uh, gift of appreciated stock might make sense for folks at this time to get some tax benefits uh, with that. And of course, uh, feel free to contact me or the president if you have questions or thoughts or ideas of um, things that you would like to see happen on campus. And we can try to figure out um, how we can help you accomplish that with us. Right. Finally, I just would say why mm. give to AU. Um, AU is a faith-based organization and Jesus is at the center of everything we do, mm. right? And we believe that our mission is more important now than it has ever been um, in the lives of our students and in the world. I think in particular, after this year of the pandemic, there was so much isolation. Students are coming really searching. Um, I think they're looking for community, belonging, purpose, meaning, faith. Um, and we can help them in that search. And then I think AU being here and fulfilling our mission is also important to the world because as, after our students come here, then they're gonna go out uh, like our student who was just here and sharing her uh, great story. They're gonna go out and work in marketing or engineering or be nurses, but they're going to be people of faith and integrity and values. Um, so, you know, AU makes the students' lives better, right. and we, we think it has a, an important impact on the world. So if you, again, if you've already given to Call to Soar, thank you. Um, and if you haven't given, I hope you will uh, prayerfully consider making a significant gift. And if you have given, 
maybe this is the year that you consider making an additional gift. Yes. Or maybe this is the year you decide to make your first gift. Um, and significant is, means different things to different people. Maybe that's $500, maybe that's $5,000. Uh, maybe that's fifty or five hundred thousand dollars. Or um, five hundred thousand dollars. I mean, there are some of you who have been blessed because of your hard work, but really through God's provision. And I think this year that there's a special provision that allows for up to one hundred percent of your adjusted gross to be made in charitable contributions. Mm -hmm. So what an opportunity that is for people to who have been blessed beyond measure don't need the. Uh, Income and I apologize getting a call, which I thought I had. Well, it's actually uh, it's a client, excuse me. It's from our mayor, and I, we're, we're dealing with some some issues in terms of the city's investment in Manish University. Well, I'll get back with the mayor. So, um, yeah, and so, and let me just uh, wrap up. And we'll go to your questions then, but by thanking everybody who's presented here, um, Michael Frank is no longer. Um, in the he, room, he is still with made, us. Made it sound like he's no he's longer still with us. us. He's no, just not. He's no longer space. in the room. Uh, that didn't that didn't come out. But uh, Rachel Milford, who was a national security student, thanking her, and then uh, FSB students, uh, Mariah um, Murray, who was on, and Katie, and then obviously Victoria Shaw, who's still here, um, and then our our folks behind the scenes here. So Michael and Matt. And, and yeah, Adam. Adam, thank you. <laughs> and then Jody, and there's probably somebody else um, who I don't know, but thanks to all you guys and gals for, for making that. And Jen, thanks to you for heading up our Office of Advancement and Development. So we'd like to open it up for questions you might have um, if you want to do the chat, and, uh, and then we'll go from there. So yeah, so, but thank you for joining us, and thank you for helping us make a difference in the lives of students who are making a difference in the lives of people in their own, I'll just say, congregation, people that God has put them in, in, in relationship with. So questions you might have. Everyone's busy writing their checks right now. That could be, or online, online. and doing the, keeping Jennifer Steiner, who gets those all those in your office, uh, all those credit card uh, donations. So it all works well. Well, we're not seeing any questions at the moment. So as Jen mentioned, follow up with Jen, anybody on her staff, for me, obviously, and, and we look forward to continuing to live out our mission statement of equipping students for life of faith and service in the church and society and what challenges and opportunities there are as we do that. So thanks for joining us. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.